So our agenda for today, what we'll be talking about. So like I said, we'll be going over general tips for working with artificial intelligence. And this will be um, this will be kind of, like I said, just a general advice. So how to work with AI, how to talk to it, how to use prompts, things like that. So not specifically with MailerLite or any specific AI in general, just how to work with artificial intelligence. Then we'll be going into AI and email marketing, how they connect. So that we'll be talking about best practices for integrating AI into your email strategy. And I'll also be giving some example prompts that you can use as well. So you can use these prompts when you're working with AI outside of MailerLite and also in MailerLite as well, which I'll talk about. Um, so we'll be going over best practices and how it ties into the email marketing world. Again, in a general sense, not even specifically just MailerLite, just how AI and email marketing go together. And then lastly, we'll be going into MailerLite's AI suite. So this is where we'll be talking about uh, MailerLite's AI subject line generator, the writing assistant, and smart sending. So these are all tools that MailerLite has released pretty recently, and they're all AI-based. So I'll be going over how they work. We'll be watching a tutorial video on how they on how um, how to use them in action, um, and we'll be sharing some documentation on how to use that as well. Okay, so that is what we'll be talking about today. Okay, so let's start getting into it. So I like this graphic. I saved it and I wanted to add it to this presentation, me and ChatGPT after finishing the work. I think it kind of in a funny way shows how working with AI is. <laughs> it's not so much that AI is taking over and doing the job for us. I think of it as an assistant or working with it. So it's something that helps us, something that helps us improve our work, helps us make our work quicker, more efficient. Um, so we're working with AI and I kind of, I like how this illustration shows that. Okay, so embracing AI in today's marketing landscape. So AI and marketing refers to the use of machine learning, artificial intelligence to predict user behavior, automate decisions and personalize communications. So there's many ways that you can use AI in marketing. There's many ways that AI can be used in general. And if this presentation was about how to use AI, it would go on for a very long time. So we're talking about AI in marketing specifically. So you can see that there's many ways to use it and specifically predicting behavior is a big one, automating decisions and personalizing communications. These are all things that as email marketers, we were doing anyway, but AI helps us do these quicker and more efficiently. And there are many different AI language learning systems out at the moment. So there's ChatGPT, which I'm sure many people have heard of. It's developed by OpenAI and it's one of the most popular advanced systems out there. And it's one of the ones that I'll be talking about most today. Also, ChatGPT is what powers MailerLite's AI tools. So again, ChatGPT is the one that I'll be talking about most today. Um, but there's also many other AI systems. You can see I've listed them here. You have Google, Meta, Gemini. There's lots of different AI systems. They all have their strengths. I have not tested all of them, but they all have different things that make them unique. I would say ChatGPT is the one that I've been using the most, the one that is more advanced to me because of all of the advancements and capabilities, which I'll go over. Um, but there are many systems out there at the moment and also many updates. They are coming out with new things all the time. There are many advancements with AI and many new systems popping up. So it's something to keep an eye on. And these are just some of the AIs that, have, that are um, out there at the moment. Okay, so how to get started? Where, how do you talk to AI? How do you access it? What, what, where is it, I guess you can say. So there's many ways to get started working with artificial intelligence. The first is accessing it basically just through your desktop, through your computer, um, using a website. So all of the different learning systems will have their own browsers, their own way to access. ChatGPT is just the website, as you can see here. They also have their own app, both for iOS and Google Play Store, I believe, as well and also MailerLite. So a lot of tools are integrating AI into their systems, including MailerLite. So you might notice a lot of the softwares you're using have actually integrated AI into their platform. So you can use AI separately on its own for whatever you need um, through methods like this, whether it's online or through an app. And you can also use it through different softwares like this in MailerLite. So obviously in MailerLite, 
the AI will be very much focused on email marketing and campaign building, which I'll go into. Um, so whereas you can use AI for so many different things, obviously when it's integrated into specific platforms, it will be focused on what that platform is meant to do. So these are kind of just the how you get started, how you start talking to it. And it is free. If you go to the chat GPT website and you just um, sign up, it is free to just get started with the basic uh, model. So that's if you haven't tried talking to AI yet, if you haven't really explored the capabilities, that's a good way to just get started. Um, so you can just kind of explore and see what it can do, um, which I will go into more of the capabilities, but that is how you would access and start talking to the system. Okay, so these are some examples of AI in action. So AI has been around for a little bit of time now, and many big companies are starting to integrate it heavily into not only their marketing, but also just how the platform works. So these are some real examples of that. So one example is Netflix's recommendation engine. How it works, Netflix uses AI to analyze your viewing history, considering what you've watched and how you've interacted with the content, what you've liked, watched, or stopped watching, and then it compares this data with the view viewing habits of others with similar tastes to recommend shows and movies you're likely to enjoy. So these are just algorithms that were already in place, and it's using AI to automate all of this. So it's using AI to, like it says, to check the things that you've liked, watched. It's basically analyzing your habits, your viewing history, and then using that to recommend shows, which is a very um, a very common model. Um, a lot of platforms, a lot of social medias, a lot of a lot of things use this kind of algorithm. Another really interesting example of AI in action that I think is one of, I think this is very interesting as well. It's Spotify's podcast translation. So this is just one of the things that AI can do. And I've started to see this more recently on Spotify. So Spotify is currently using the power of AI voice technology for their translation feature, which helps podcasters expand the reach of their storytelling by translating podcasts into additional languages in the podcaster's own voice. So this technology I notice is being used in a lot of places, but specifically I'm talking about Spotify because it is quite interesting and I've seen it myself. So what that looks like is AI is voice technology is able to take a snippet of someone's voice and then use that to basically create, like it says, a podcast or translate to another language um, using their voice and it sounds just like them. This is an example. This is actually a podcast I listen to quite frequently. It's Lex Friedman, who's a popular podcaster. And he, I noticed, has been using this voice translation technology. Um, I noticed it recently because he does all of his podcasts in English. But I also saw that he has a separate podcast now, which is translated with AI, and it's in Spanish. So hopefully I can play just a little snippet so you can see. This is what the original podcast sounds like. The following is a conversation with Sean Carroll his third time in this podcast. He is a theoretical physicist at John Hopkins, host of the Mindscape podcast. I'll give Einstein a lot of credit, but then we also... So you can see this is how the podcast is normally. It's a conversation in English. And then here, this is the podcast translated with AI into Spanish. La versión original de este episodio fue grabada en inglés. Las traducciones de voz se generan de forma artificial. So for anyone that doesn't speak Spanish, that was just a disclaimer saying that the original podcast is in English, but it's being translated into Spanish um, using artificial intelligence. So it's just letting everyone know that that is what it is. And you'll see that it is his voice, the original voice, everything, but translated. Es especial a la relatividad general. Qué tan difícil es imaginar eso, considerar el espacio-tiempo en conjunto e imaginar que hay una curvatura en todo esto. Sí, esa es una gran pregunta. Creo que si quieres defender la grandeza de Einstein, lo cual no es difícil de hacer, hay dos cosas que deben... So you can see it's quite interesting because it's translating it in real time and this is a video podcast. So it's even translating it as they're, you know, in real time as they're speaking. Um, so it's quite interesting. It's using their own original voices and this obviously just helps to expand the reach of the podcaster. There's lots of ways that this technology can be used, but it's I find it very interesting because... You know, the original podcaster, they don't, they're not speaking Spanish. They're not, they don't have to necessarily 
do anything extra other than translating it with AI and they can reach a whole new audience. So this is just one of the examples of the capabilities of AI in one specific sense. And this is also a real life example that Spotify is using. So let's talk about AI's impact on email marketing specifically because we are Mailer Light, and of course we are going to be talking about email marketing mostly and how AI has an impact on that industry. So there's many different ways that AI can help email marketers. AI can analyze subscriber interactions with your emails. It can also segment your audience based on their behavior, which a lot of platforms can already do, but AI is now being integrated to help make this more, more detailed and more automated. So while a lot of platforms can already do these things, AI is helping to improve, enhance all of these features. And also one of my favorite uses, creative inspiration. This is probably what I use, like what I personally use AI for the most is creative inspiration. It's to get ideas. Um, I do a lot of writing. So it's to get, you know, just content ideas, copywriting ideas, things that I can tweak and personalize to be in my own voice, but just to get something started. Um, as creatives, I think it's always good to just have a, a starting point, something that does just provide a bit of inspiration. And AI is really great for that because it can generate a lot of ideas very quickly. And you can just go through them and see which ones you like, which ones you don't need, and which ones you can improve upon. So it's a really great way to just get that first creative spark going. And just a statistic, marketers using utilizing AI for email personalization reported a significant 41% increase in revenue and a higher click-through rate of 13.44%. So AI and email marketing is becoming more and more interconnected. And I'm sure you'll notice that a lot of tools are including AI more into their systems. So it is helping, as we can see from the results, it is helping to increase click-through rates, increase engagement. And there's many reasons for that. It's not random. Um, as I mentioned before, AI helps to analyze your interact subscriber interactions with your emails, which is what I'll be talking about a bit more when I talk about MailerLite specific AI tools. Um, but basically, this is how AI helps this is how AI improves by analyzing data in a much quicker, faster way than we would have been able to in the past. And then using those, um, using the data to make predictions. Okay, so let's talk about working with AI, how to talk to it, how to get good responses from it, how to use prompts, things like that. Um, just kind of an interesting thing, this image right here I created using AI. It was kind of created quickly, so it's not perfect. Um, there's a system called Dolly, which is an image generating system. So I believe I typed in something like um, generate an image of um, an email marketer using artificial intelligence or something like that. And this is what it came up with. Um, so it's also an image generator as well. Like I said, there's many, many uses with AI, not only with text, but also with images, which I won't be talking about too much, but this is just something I created with that. Okay, so different ways to talk to AI. So something that is quite interesting about the next couple slides is this next portion of this presentation is I asked ChatGPT how to talk to AI. I basically asked it what are the most effective ways that someone, what are the most effective tips that someone needs to know to use artificial intelligence to get the most out of it, to talk to it in the most efficient way? So these tips aren't really coming from me necessarily, although I have used all of these tips myself, um, but this is actually AI it, itself saying how to talk to it, I guess you can say. So one of the first tips is to detail your goal. Begin by specifying what you aim to achieve with the AI's assistance, whether it's generating content, analyzing data, or optimizing campaigns. So letting it know what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish by using that system. Um, it could be um, increasing open rates. So this is an example I used. I'm looking to increase the open rates of our email campaigns for our spring sale. Um, and I put these in quotes because this is what an example of what you would actually input when you're talking to the AI. So when you're having that conversation, that back and forth um, dialogue, whatever, this would be an example of what you would put. So I'm looking to increase my open rates. I'm looking to do this, this, and that. 
Um, the more detail, the better, just to give it context of what you're trying to achieve. And speaking of context, like I said, you want to offer as much relevant background information as possible. One of the interesting things about these learning systems is that they can remember things that they've been told or they can you know, hold the data. So you don't always have to give the same background information, but initially when you are first using um, ChatGPT or whatever AI system, you do want to give as much background information as possible. The more context you give, the more tailored and accurate the AI's responses will be. So for an example, this is something that we could input. Our company, MailerLite, specializes in email marketing software, for small to medium-sized businesses. Our target audience includes marketers, small business owners who use email marketing to engage with their customers. So this would be just giving it context of what MailerLite does and um, who we are, who our target audience is, um, everything like that. So context could be all of those things. It could be, of course, the name of your business, the name of your brand, but also what you do, who your target audience is, um, what you specialize in, what the service is, just providing all of that context. Okay, another tip is show, don't just tell. So provide examples of what you're looking for, such as sample email subject lines or content structures you admire. So this is a very good tip. It's basically just giving examples so the AI knows what to model off of. And of course, it's not, you know, copy this. It's not just as simple as that. It's, you know, this is, you can see here the example, these are subject lines we love. So if you're trying to generate more subject lines, you can give it examples of ones that you like, ones that caught your attention. If there's specific ones that you've seen that you think, oh, I can use that structure or I like what they did there. How can I do something similar? Um, you can basically ask these questions to the AI um, by giving it examples. So this helps it to see the structure of the the answer that you want, it also helps it to understand more about what you're trying to achieve. Okay, and like I said, when you're talking to AI, it very much is a conversation. It's a back and forth dialogue. So you can adjust based on the responses. If the initial response isn't quite what you expected, you can tweak your prompt by adding more details, adjusting the focus, or asking follow-up questions based on the AI's output. So you can do this with any AI system, even in MailerLite as well. So if you have, if you get a response and it's not some, if you're not happy with it, you don't have to just end it there. You can tweak it. You can have that back and forth conversation, that follow up. So an example here, let's say you had a an answer. It's not quite right. So you say the initial subject lines generated were too generic. Can you create uh, subject lines that emphasize urgency and the limited time aspect of the sale? So just giving it more context of what you want, telling it exactly why you didn't like the previous response. It was too generic. Um, I want more something like this. Um, and then it will adjust. So that's part of that uh, back and forth to so that the more context you give it and the more conversation you have, the more you talk to it, the more accurate the response will be. So you eventually do get the output you're looking for. Okay, and this actually was also one of the tips that ChatGPT recommended, which is AI developments or keeping on top of the developments. So AI technology is rapidly evolving. Keeping up to date with new features and capabilities can enhance how you craft prompts. So this is very important because like I said, it is evolving rapidly and that is very true because every month, every week, there is new updates, there is something new happening. And this is important to keep on top of if you're working with AI, because the more that you know about it, the more that you learn about its new features and capabilities, the better you can be at working with it and getting um, good results from it. Um, so I will be talking about just a, a quick, some AI developments um, that have happened recently that I find very interesting. And I think it's important to kind of mention the most recent developments that have happened with AI in a general sense before we get into speaking about MailerLite more specifically. Um, so in September of last year, we learned that ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak, um, which is pretty incredible. So what I mean by that is you can have a voice chat. So like I mentioned, with ChatGPT and AI, it is a conversation. 
Typically that, conversations ha that conversation happens by a text, but you can also use the voice chat feature. So this is typically only with the app, the um, ChatGPT app. You can actually have a voice conversation with AI and it's le a lot less robotic <laughs> than you might think. And I do have an example of that on the next slide, which I will show you. Um, but it is quite interesting, the advancements now that you can just have that conversation. And it might seem strange at first, but once you get used to talking to AI that way, it's actually very helpful. Um, there's also image analyzing. So what do I mean by ChatGPT can now see? <laughs> that is the case. So image analyzing, this came out a few months, well, several months ago now. Um, basically, you can input an image into ChatGPT, and it could be an image of, of anything. And then you can ask questions about that image. Um, so an example in like, this can be something that can be used in professional sense, personal sense. There's so many ways you can use this, but basically, yeah, it can see the images that you um, input to it and you can ask questions. So it's quite interesting. Um, and then this month, just a few days ago, uh, GPT 4.0 was released, which was is the most recent, uh, most advanced model of chat GPT. And I think it's quite interesting. Um, this latest release of chat of GPT 4.0 to me is the most uh, impressive like model I've seen. Um, and if you haven't seen the announcement video or if you haven't heard about um, GPT 4.0, I do have that here because, uh, like I said, I think it's important to talk about it in this sense of not only AI in a general sense, but email marketing and MailerLite. It all ties together, and I don't want to talk too broadly about so many different subjects. But like I said, knowing the, the latest advancements of AI, it is it is important to um, be able to work with it. So this is the announcement for GPT-40. I might take a second to play. Um, this is from OpenAI, the, um, the creators of ChatGPT, and this is their announcement. So what they're showing here is how their latest model can actually like have conversations with video, almost like a FaceTime, which I, it doesn't, it's very interesting. So I will play that. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling, though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Hmm. From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video or maybe even a live stream. Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's going to be quite the professional production. Is this announcement related to OpenAI, perhaps? It is. <laughs> and in fact, what if I were to say that you're related to the announcement or that you are the announcement? Mm -hmm. Me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? or more specifically about me as a part of open AI. You've got me on the edge of my, well, I don't really have a seat, but you get the idea. What's the big news? Yeah, we've got a new model that can interact with the world through audio, vision, and text. Um, so that was, yeah, that was the announcement for ChatGPT 4.0, which I think you would agree is quite interesting. It can see what he was looking at and what he was showing in the room, and it's Probably one of the biggest advancements I've seen. Um, one other very interesting feature that I will demonstrate, and then we will go into prompting and we'll talk more about how to actually, um, some example prompts that you can use to talk to AI. Um, but this is one of the other very interesting features that I saw. There's lots, they released a lot of very interesting things here. So if you're interested, in the advancements of ChatGPT for all of this, I recommend checking their website and checking the videos that they have posted um, just to get an idea. But these are just some of the ones that I find uh, the most interesting. So this is another example. Um, this is another example of the translation. 
Um, this is actually a real a real time translation happening here. So I think that this is quite interesting as well. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm here with my coworker today. Um, we'd like you to act as our translator for us. So every time I say something in English, can you repeat it back in Spanish? And every time he says something in Spanish, can you repeat it back in English? Sure, I can do that. Let's get this translation train rolling. Um, hey, how's it been going? Have you been up to anything interesting recently? Um, hola, ¿cómo te ha ido? ¿Has hecho algo interesante últimamente? Hola, bien. Uh, sí, un poco ocupado aquí preparando un evento para la semana que viene. Hey, I've been good. Just a bit busy here preparing for an event next week. Can you tell me anything about it? That sounds really interesting. ¿Me puedes contar algo sobre eso? Suena realmente interesante. Uh, no, no puedo decir mucho, pero creo que el resto del mundo lo verá dentro de poco. I can't say much, but I think the rest of the world will see it soon enough. Oh, well, I can't wait to see what it is as well. So like I said, just another example of one of the most recent developments and just showing how that newest model works. Okay, so shifting gears a little bit, we're gonna talk about example prompts and tips specifically for email marketers. So I did go into a little bit of um, ways to talk to AI. This will actually be prompts that you can use directly with either ChatGPT or with MailerLite itself. And I will talk about how to use these with MailerLite too. Okay, so a couple ways that email marketers can use um, AI and uh, prompts that you can just directly input is design feedback. So this is just one of the things. You can say, analyze this email template for your brand and suggest improvements. So this would actually involve adding an image of a template or anything else. Let's say that there's just a design that you like from another brand, another company, something that you see that catches your attention. And of course you don't necessarily want to uh, just take that idea, but you want to maybe suggest, you know, get improvements or get some creative inspiration from it. So you can actually um, have an image of that, of that template, of that email, of that ad, whatever it is and say, can you analyze this and um, give me some feedback, some improvements, things like that. So you can actually use it for design, creative inspiration that way. You can use it for content ideas. And like I said, this is probably one of the things that I use AI for the most is just generating ideas. So one of the example prompts is generate content ideas for, our, for your brand newsletter focused on whatever topic. So I left these um, in, uh, like, uh, ways to input your own um, brand, your own topic, because that is how you will um, form the prompt. Another one is create compelling subject lines for an upcoming blank campaign about blank. So these are just ways to generate different ideas, subject lines, content ideas, um, call to actions. It's giving the AI the brand name, the topic, the subject, um, and exactly what you want um, the output to be. You can also ask for A-B testing recommendations. So of course in marketing and in MailerLite, we do A-B testing a lot for different things, email campaigns, forms, automations. There's A-B testing in all aspects of that. So you can use AI to recommend A-B test ideas because one of the great things about A-B testing is you can, you can test many different elements from subject lines to content, images, all of that but you might need some ideas for different things to test. So you can use AI to do that. So you can say recommend A-B test for our blank email campaign about product service. Um, and then that'll recommend different things that you can test and give you ideas that you can then use in your campaign. You can also take it even broader and have it um, generate, uh, help you with a campaign strategy. So you can say outline a strategy for your brand email campaign targeting this segment. So if you need ideas on a strategy, so let's say you're trying to build a workflow, an automation, and you need some ideas and some tips on how to build an automation, how to make it um, more effective, how to target it for a specific segment. If you just need ideas and a strategy for all of this and you want a starting point, you can um, copy and paste that right into a system like ChatGPT and you can get ideas um, when you input your brand and the segment that you're trying to target. Um, you can also obviously tweak this a bit to get different outputs, but this is a good way to just generate 
different strategies and ideas for testing. You can also use it for seasonal campaign ideas. So you can say, create a list of seasonal campaign ideas for our brand for the upcoming season. So whether that's Black Friday, Christmas, anything, if you just need some different ideas for content, you can actually target it for that specific um, holiday season. You can also get visual content ideas. So like I said, it doesn't have to be just text-based, although you can generate images. This is more using the AI to generate um, content ideas that are visual. So video ideas, um, photo shoot ideas, things like that. So you can say generate, vi generate visual content ideas for our brand about um, topic product. And then it will give you, you know, you can add these design elements to your campaign. You can include a video about this, um, all different type of visual content ideas. And lastly, competitor analysis. So one of the things you can also do if you are doing your own competitor analysis, but you want to take it a step further, you can ask ChatGPT, analyze this competitor email, suggest what either we can do better or give me a breakdown on what they did. Um, it's basically just taking a normal way that you would analyze a competitor design, email, marketing, whatever, and using ChatGPT to enhance that, to get more ideas out of that. Okay. And lastly, we're going to be talking about MailerLite's AI Suite. Um, so this is going to be the last part of the webinar. So we talked about AI in a general sense, how to talk to it, how where to find it, um, how to access it, and what it's capable of, and then how it ties into the email marketing world specifically and how email marketers can benefit from it and use it. And now we're going to be going into how all of that um, ties into MailerLite and how MailerLite has incorporated all of this technology into its platform, into our platform. So I'm gonna play our main video that shows these features before I talk about them a little bit more in depth. Um, this video just kind of gives an overview and shows you how these features work in action. So you'll be seeing the subject line generator, the writing assistant, and also smart sending. And I will go over all of these more in depth in the next few slides. And um, this is just our uh, video showing how they work in action. Welcome to the future of email marketing with MailerLite, where we're not just making email campaigns smarter, we're making them amazingly simple. With MailerLite, it's like having a team of experts at your fingertips, ensuring your emails hit the mark every time. Now, if you're struggling with the perfect subject line, you can let AI take the wheel. Watch as I simply add a few details to prompt at the AI subject generator, and within a few seconds, I have a list of subject lines to choose from. But that's not all. Meet your new creative co-pilot, the AI writing assistant. If you want playful, professional, or persuasive, you can try a few of these options and see what fits best. From titles, buttons, content blocks, and more, you can say goodbye to writer's block and generate content within seconds. Now let's brighten things up with some images. With our Canva integration, you can import your creative designs and images from your Canva account straight into your campaigns with just a few clicks. Now, if you're not sure which subject line or image works best, you can let your audience decide with A-B testing. You can make informed decisions based on real results and watch as your audience takes notice. A-B testing is proven to increase open and click rates by promoting what your audience engages with most. Now it's time to send the campaign. And again, we can turn to AI here. Smart sending isn't just another catchy name, but it is a way to ensure your email lands at the perfect moment to your subscribers. Our AI-powered scheduling tools help you deliver your emails at the exact moment each subscriber is most likely to engage with it based on past interactions, sign-up dates, and even time zones. It's really that easy. And the more you use smart sending, the more it will learn about your audience and will even adapt to your subscribers' behavior over time. So in general, the more you work with AI, the smarter it will be. Creating stunning, effective email campaigns has never been this intuitive. MailerLite's AI-powered campaign creation helps you take advantage of some of the most powerful tools currently available for marketers. And of course, we're keeping it light as always. Now it's your turn to embrace the simplicity, power, and the future of email marketing with MailerLite. Okay, so one of the first things we're talking about is the subject line generator. So as you can see in the video, that is when you're first creating a campaign and you're in the area where it's time to um, generate a subject line, you can either 
create one as normal, or you can use the subject line generator. So this is what it looks like. And as you saw in the video, there's different ways to help prompt the AI initially. So you have the tone of voice, um, which you can choose at the start. You also have the type of campaign. So this helps the AI understand what type of subject line to um, output because it knows whether it's a promotion or an offer, an announcement, and then it knows whether or not the tone of voice should be more natural, professional, catchy, um, all of those things. So this is what initially the um, generator looks like. Um, it is available on premium plans with MailerLite and it's available for all campaign types. Um, so you can use the generator to just get different ideas. Um, as you can see, it also has different language options, not just English. You can choose um, different languages for generating the, the output. And then as you can see, it generates several different results and you can just click the insert button to insert it into your campaign. And also if you're not happy with the output, as we talked about before, it's always good to um, have that follow-up if it's not what you're looking for. So we have the option as well to regenerate. So that just regenerates a whole new list of subject lines. So if you're not happy with the initial results, you can just easily regenerate and add those to your campaign. And then we also have the writing assistant. So this takes the same uh, technology that the subject line generator has, but puts it in the actual editor and expands it to be used for more things. So this means that you can actually use the AI to help come up with content in your campaign itself. So this is an example of what it looks like. And you also saw how it worked in action in the video. So when you're in the campaign editor in MailerLite, you're using the drag and drop editor you will see that you can have the option to use AI. And this is what it looks like. So once again, you're choosing the tone of voice, um, or no, sorry, once again, you're choosing the tone of voice here, but this actually shows what the, what the content should be. So in the subject line generator, you're choosing what type of campaign it is. Here, you're choosing what type of content you're generating. So whether it's a title, a short paragraph, long paragraph, call to action, um, and then it'll know exactly what you're trying to achieve. And again, you can regenerate if you're not happy with it. And then you can also just click to insert it straight into your campaign. So talking about tone of voice, you'll notice that both the subject line generator and the writing assistant have the tone of voice option to prompt the AI first. And it helps to prompt the AI to form a response that is suited for the type of campaign you're sending. So for example, if a formal tone is selected, it'll choose vocabulary that's used in professional context. So it might avoid slang, contractions, colloquial expressions, things like that. It'll just be very professional. Um, likewise, if you choose a catchy tone, for example, it'll be more attention grabbing. It'll be more like a call to action type of um, tone. So it, it can include powerful action verbs, intriguing adjectives, creative metaphors. It might use short, snappy sentences, things that are maybe more attractive for social media or subject lines, things like that. Um, so to capture readers' attention more quickly. So that just helps to um, prompt it initially. So it's one of the first things you choose when you're working with the AI in MailerLite is a tone of voice. And the next thing you're choosing is the text type. So I mentioned this briefly when talking about the, um, the in-editor writing assistant you're choosing the text type. So what that looks like is you're choosing what content it's generating. So if it's a title, it'll be a short, catchy title that you can insert um, into your campaign. If you choose a short paragraph, it'll be just a little, a short paragraph, just a few sentences, so concise text. Long paragraph is more detailed text. It could be um, like several small paragraphs. And then call to action, so short phrases, short, short phrases that encourage the reader to take specific action. So it can be, you know, click here to learn more, sign up today, all of those um, actions. But because you're using AI, you can give it the specific, um, uh, I guess, the specific brand, the specific topic you're talking about. So it can cater those call to actions because the sign up today, the click here are very generic. Um, so if you're curious to get more tailored, more interest, like more dynamic content, you can use the CTA button for that as well. And one of the last features I'll be talking about is smart sending. Um, so you saw in the video that as you're creating a campaign, you can use AI throughout many different steps. So at the beginning, when you're creating the initial campaign, you can use the subject line generator. When you're creating the content of the campaign, you can use the writing assistant. 
And then at the end, when you're getting ready to send, we've also added AI tools into that as well, where you can actually use AI to send the campaign at the most optimal time for each subscriber. So what that looks like. Smart sending is AI powered email timing that learns each subscriber's habits for optimal open rates. So it basically, over time, it learns your subscribers the time that they open the campaign the most, the time that they interact the most, and this is for individual subscribers. So it adapts over time, ensuring your emails always hit the inbox at the perfect moment. And this is available on advanced plans only, the smart sending. And the smart sending is quite interesting because like I said, it adapts over time. So when you initially use it, the results will be more accurate as you keep using it. And I'll go over lastly, how MailerLite um, knows the most optimal time to send for your subscribers. But basically with smart sending, that is the idea. As with AI in general, the more you use it, the more it learns and the more accurate it will be. Um, so that also is with the smart sending as well. So how the smart sending knows the best time to send the campaign, there's a few different ways. Um, the first is by click activity. So determining a subscriber's active times based on when they click links and emails. So this just helps determine when they're active, when they're opening emails, when they're interacting with their emails. Um, so the click activity is the most accurate data that we have for that. The next is open rates. So if there's not a lot of click activity, you can use open rates, same um, logic. They, um, the smart sending will analyze when your subscriber, subscriber has opened emails, when they are interacting, when they are online um, reading your emails. Then for new subscribers, um, they analyze it analyzes the subscription time. So this is the time that they signed up through a form, the time that they signed up through another means, the time that they were basically subscribed and were added to your account. It'll use that time as when they are most active. And again, as they, you send the campaigns and as they open them and click different things, this will get more accurate. So initially when they're a new subscriber, it'll just go by the time that they subscribed and then later on it'll adapt to other, um, other things. Then also imported subscribers. So for these subscribers, we don't have any past data for when they're opening emails or anything. So we're gonna, so for that, it uses the most popular sending times in your account. And then the same, or similar for new accounts, it'll just send the email at one specific time, 9 a.m. in your account's time zone until enough data is collected. So for imported and new accounts, um, same thing as new subscribers, it just needs some time to actually gather that data. Um, so again, the more you use it, the more it will um, gain all of that insight. All right, I'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much. Um, keep track of our other webinars. If you're curious, when we have, um, our next sessions will be posted in the MailerLite community and also on our website so you can see more sessions like this.